Hello everyone. Um, hope everyone is doing okay. Uh, won't be before you long. Just want to uh, share uh, a quick devotional, but then also uh, just share some information with our church family <clears throat> in regards to our children and youth and young adults. Uh, some things that we have uh, coming up on our calendar uh, just for you to be aware of so that everyone can be on board and on the same page. Um, as you know, it's been now since the uh, the third Sunday in March since we've gathered uh, in person and we've been uh, having um, virtual worship. Uh, we've been having virtual Bible studies, virtual Sunday schools, whether that's uh, Zoom or whether it's conference call, but uh, for the most part, we have not been physically at our church campus. Um, because of that, we've had to uh, kind of move a little bit differently, uh, try to think of some things that we could do to uh, still be safe, but also engage our congregation, um, whether it be our adults, whether it be our, our men's classes or our women's classes, um, and specifically, uh, me addressing the children and youth um, and every ministry that involves under that particular umbrella. Uh, under children and youth, we know that we have uh, or we meet, if you will, on Sundays around 1030 for our, our uh, Christian education or our Sunday school hour. That's usually after our nine o'clock service. And then we also meet uh, on Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock for an hour, uh, seven to 8 p.m. So we're talking about uh, about two hours out of the week, each week that we're, that we're intentionally focusing on what it is that we do in the children and youth ministry. Not only that, uh, we know we also have what we call Lamb's Worship, uh, our children's church, where uh, our adults are in the main sanctuary and then our, our children are um, in their building, having uh, their worship at their uh, regarded and designated time. So we're missing that. That's 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 two to three hours, three and a half hours, if you will, out of a week that um, we are no longer meeting, no longer gathering, no longer having uh, the enrichment and the development and uh, the wisdom from some of the teachers uh, that we would normally have. But in lieu of that, uh, Pastor Skinner, Pastor Johnson, our elders, our our deacons, um, they've they've come up with, um, uh, guess an avenue, if you will, for us to still engage. But it's going to take uh, parental involvement. It's going to take uh, parents allowing the child to um, participate. It's going to take allowing the children um, to. Uh, do what it is that their teachers are asking them to do. And when I say teachers, uh, I am talking about their their Sunday teachers, talking about uh, Christian education. Uh, we know that we're not talking about um, three or four hours out of a week like we normally would. But we are talking about uh, giving some time, um, isolating uh, some time out of the week, sacrificing some time so that our teachers can be able to communicate, share the gospel, uh, and continue to make disciples as we've always strive to do uh, as a Good Shepherd Church. Uh, I'm going to share this and then I'll share uh, just a few other thoughts in regards to how we're going to move in the next um, several days and weeks to come. And hopefully this will be uh, less than uh, 15 minutes. But uh, in thinking about what teachers do and what they are uh, equipped to do and um, teaching our, our children and teaching our youth, teaching our teenagers, um, we know what the Bible is. And the definition that I always say that the Bible is, is uh, it's God's love letter to his people, to his children. We're all God's children. No matter how old you are, you are a child of God. You're somebody's child and we're we're all God's children. So I don't know if y'all can remember, um, especially for the adults back in the day 
when we were in school and we would get love letters. You get love letters from a person uh, that you were interested in and you read that love letter and they be saying how much they love you and how much they care about you and how they want to spend time with you. Uh, and you know how that love letter made you feel. Now, we're talking about 15, 20 years ago. For some of us, 30 or even 40 years ago, we're not talking about the age of, of uh, Instagram and Facebook and uh, social media and some of this instant technology that we have. But we took time to write out letters and those who re received the letters took time to actually read the letters. Well, that's exactly the way we should look at God's word. It's a love letter that he specifically wrote to his children. And in this letter, he tells us over and over and over again how much he loves us. There's a passage in Second uh, Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 16 through 21. And Peter tells us how amazing and how uh, important God's word is and how it's more important even than our own life experiences. He does. Now, we've all had various types of experiences in our lives, some good, some bad, some painful, some that we uh, want to forget. But check this out. When I was in school, we used to another another thing that some of the older people can uh, can remember. We, we used to play a game called uh, Big Bank, Take Little Bank, Big Bank, Take Little Bank. And the way Big Bank, Take Little Bank win is, you know. If I came to school and I pulled up and I'm feeling myself that particular day and I felt like I had more money than you had money, then I would challenge you and say, hey, big bank, take little bank. And if you accepted that challenge, we pulled out our money and we counted it up or somebody counted it up for us. And whoever had the most money would win the game. So if I had one hundred dollars and you had only 50, that means I get to take your 50 dollars and it's mine. Now, we at school spending our allowance and uh, the lunch money that our moms and dads had worked hard for. But that's what the game, that's, that's, that's how the game went. Big bank take little bank. And literally, that is what Peter is doing in this particular context, in this particular setting. He's, he's, he's kind of playing big bank take little bank when it comes to our life experiences. Peter says, man, if you want to talk about your life experiences, then let me talk about mine because your life experiences in comparison to mine are not going to be the same. I guarantee you that my life experiences has a greater meaning than some of the things you have experienced. So here's here's what he says. When it comes to seeing Jesus Christ face to face in the flesh, you and I never have. We've never seen Jesus Christ. We talked about Jesus Christ. We read about him in the scripture. But Peter actually saw Jesus Christ in the flesh. He saw him. And in that passage, what Peter is saying is, he's saying, I was there. I heard God the Father speak. I saw Jesus with my own eyes. And nobody got to experience what Peter got to experience. So here's what he's saying. Since you can't top any of my experiences and I've got the top experience. And the reason I got the top experience is because I was with Jesus. Listen to what I have to say about my experience. And he says, it does us good to embrace the word of God. That's simply my message to everyone, to our parents, to our youth, to our children, to our young adults. It does us good to embrace the word of God, to make sure that the word is what we hold on to, not just our life experiences. So as we uh, study the word of God together, as we do devotionals, as we do Zoom calls, as we do conference calls, let's talk about our life experiences together and work through the rich truths of scripture, because it's only in God's word that he'll help us. To get through the hard times, uh, to to help us how to work through when we're broken, when we're lonely, when we're depressed, when we are falling into temptation. And your teachers have the word of God. They have the word of truth and they are ready to show it to you. But parents, I need you to allow this to happen. For some of them, uh, I know that teachers are now reaching out to some parents and uh, they want to do some Zoom calls. 
uh, they want to do some things that are outside of our norm. So parents, when you do get those calls, when you get those text messages, when you get those emails um, from the teachers, I am asking, Pastor Skinner is asking, Pastor Johnson is asking that you would cooperate, that you would allow your child to participate. We are literally talking about two hours maximum of screen time uh, during a week, during the week. But this is something that will enrich them. This is something that uh, will keep them in the word of God. We know that they have TikTok videos and uh, Fortnite and, and YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and uh, Fire Sticks and everything else that they are uh, listening to. But everything, everything that they listen to is sort of theology. Because anything that you're listening to is a study of God. And whenever they're listening to that other stuff that does not have to do with God, it does thwart their mind and it does change the way or change their view of how they think about God. So why not allow them to spend time in God's word with their teachers, with other students, with other brothers and sisters in Christ who believe the same thing, who lift up the name of Jesus Christ and who can talk about their life experiences with a biblical worldview. Um, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to ask your parents to allow that access. Uh, if you need to reach out to me, most of you have my phone number. My email address is, um, S Skinner. I think everybody knows how to spell Skinner. S Skinner at G S M B C Houston dot O R G. That's S Skinner at G S M B C Houston dot O R G. If you have an issue with a computer or a laptop or a phone that you your child does not have access to, please let me know that because we want each of them to be able to have access to some sort of device if their teachers reach out to them so that they can be on Zoom. Parents, I do know uh, just according to what we post on Facebook and YouTube from the comments and things of that nature, I know you guys are looking at the videos and that's fine. I'm glad that you're doing it. But the videos are not for you, not those videos that come from our children and youth teachers. They're for our children. So just as you are watching it, please allow your children to engage in that screen time and watch those videos as well. Because there will be some follow ups. There will be some phone calls from teachers uh, just to make sure that they are watching it, just to make sure that they uh, did understand what was being communicated in those videos. So we ask that you would uh, sacrifice that time out of the week. And again, if you need to call me, you need to call Pastor Skinner, you need to call any of those teachers, you know that you have um, access to it. We know that this is a this is a new normal or a different type of normal, if you will. So we just want to stay with some consistency. Uh, most of you know, and I'll, I'll upload that in the comments and try to upload it in the video, um, that Pastor Skinner and Pastor Tim and the leaders sent out a Christian education schedule. So you can expect every Sunday at 11 a.m. that those pre-recorded videos uh, will be posted for our, our preschool children, uh, our elementary school students, our middle school students, uh, our high school students do a Zoom call with me every Sunday. If you want that info, uh, you're more than welcome to, to, to ask about it and we'll send it to you. Uh, and then even on Wednesday nights by 6 p.m., we'll be record, we'll be posting those pre-recorded videos from our teachers, um, our preschool class, our, our elementary school class, our middle school class. There's something for everybody. I even want to encourage our young adults. Our young adults do a Zoom call every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Um, it's practical. We discuss some very hot topics. Uh, we, we get real. It's it's relevant. It's relatable. Uh, it's very transparent. And if you were usually in our young adult class, we ask that you would join in with us again during this time. It's from the comfort of your own home. Everything is um, um, left confident. We've been doing it now since the first week in April. And we've never heard anything that was uh, said or discussed in the group mentioned outside of the group. So we ask that you would come and be a part of that. All young adults. Um, and then finally, uh, as you know, uh, usually around this time of month, we get ready to attend our summer camp, which is uh, Stony Creek. Um, this year, they're not having the camp operable and that's due to COVID. 
uh, they they shut it down. A lot of a lot of churches, a lot of organizations, a lot of ministries have backed out, so they won't be having that camp this year. But we as a church, we were scheduled to go to San Antonio uh, as a as a children and children's and youth group. Uh, Pastor Skinner, Pastor Tim, uh, myself, the leaders decided that that was not um, gonna be a smart idea. All those 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 amusement parks and those places that we were going to visit uh, are going to be open um, for the the health and safety of our children and our youth. We are making the decision to not go to that trip. One to go ahead on and put that out there. Let it be known publicly that, uh, that we'll not be going to that trip. If anyone has made any kind of donations or contributions towards Stony Creek or even towards San Antonio, and you want to know where those contributions will be applied, you can get with your uh, carousel leader or you can call the church office and they'll let you know what to do with those funds. But again, um, I'm speaking on the authority of Pastor Skinner uh, and I'm speaking to parents specifically to ask you, uh, plead with you, beg of you to allow your child, your teenagers uh, to engage in what we're doing on Sundays and Wednesdays during the week to allow them that time of Bible study, that time of Sunday school, that time to spend um, um, time in God's word, um, responding to their teachers, engaging with other students. If you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, hope you're blessed.